robotics of today, to me, we, we kind of call it flying, swimming, or crawling. And when you think that we can digitize the world, one of the things you have to ask is, uh, how do you digitize the world? And you digitize the world by putting all kinds of sensors out in the world. What's the world we like to capture? Well, we like to capture our pipes and our vessels and our millions of square miles of surface of, of these things in, in the long corridors where we have pipelines and things. And to put those sensors out there under high coverage, I can't do that with humans. So I've got to use flying, swimming, and crawling kinds of robots. It's an exciting role. Uh, people have told me I have one of the best jobs in BD, and I absolutely believe that. We're a company who really embraces technology to, to safely find hydrocarbons and, and produce energy. One of our challenges is that we've got all this existing kit, uh, and how do you get the data sensors out there in a way uh, and access uh, where it's there? So we've got this strong interest in human types of forms for these robots because we turn valves as human hands in that. But there's a lot of our kit that we've actually not accessed easily as humans. And this is where a lot of these new forms come in. So this is where I can fly with different types of drones, depending on where I want to place the sensors and how long I want to take the measurement and how much coverage I have to get. I have tight places where I can't fly in it, so I probably can crawl. <laughs> so I can put crawling robots that get behind pipes and things where I can either fly behind them and get it. Because I'm interested in both sides of the pipe, right? A lot of our stuff goes, it's a pipe, <laughs> and it goes into the water. I want to look at the entirety of the pipes and want to connect the data from what I can see above the water line to what I do below the water line. So I'm going to need a different type of robotic platform to do the sensors there. The whole idea behind EcoSub is can we get some very rapid deployment? Getting some information from these sensors I'm talking about, whether they're visual sensors, whether they're hydrocarbon detector sensors, whether they're acoustic sensors to listen to mammalian life or something. So if you think of it, I could fly a drone <laughs> to carry an EcoSub out in the middle of the ocean and then drop the EcoSub in the water. So again, EcoSub was about a real low-cost way of getting sensors into an environment very quickly and be untethered and stay out there for a long time. You know, if you think of the full value chain of an energy company, there's a lot of places we go and work. In exploration, for example, I go out in the middle of the bush, in the middle of nowhere, or I go out on ice fields or anything. There's places where robots would come and be able to go instead of having to have a human go there. So that's not about pipes or anything. That's about how do I get something that can go through tundra or go through heavy, dense bush. It's not just about pipes. I can uh, have robots come out in emergency response or crisis management types of approaches. So we're starting to see the use of robots in, in quite a few places, well beyond just looking at pipes and vessels. to look at this as an analogy is astronomy has moved from a, a qualitative observational science to a quantitative analytical science. That's the same way I think we are in operational. That's the transformation that I see happening. The way we're going to operate now, we're going to be the new astronomers in our operations.